Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and this is the moment you've all been waiting for, ranking all of the existing Awakened characters. But first, I have to make a small announcement. They listened. Go to your notices tab. Go get your 10 tokens as an apology for the disruption to Alliance. No, not Alliance. A co-op and world boss invasion. Thank you very much, Marvel Future Fight. Thank you to the devs. Thank you to whoever's listening to us. This is exactly the kind of stuff that you do to keep your player base happy. This is just the right thing to do. This is the right call. It seems very simple, uh, but then players are going to feel fulfilled. Players are going to feel like they're not getting ripped off. Players are going to feel like they're heard and listened to, and they're going to spend more money. They're going to play your game. They're going to encourage other people to play your game, promote your game for free. So yes, thank you. Awesome. Really, really happy that I woke up this morning, went on Twitter, and I saw a bunch of people tag me, yo, they listened, yo, I got my 10 tokens, yo. So all you people that were gonna be at 690 tokens who can now get back up to 700 tokens to grab that mega tier two ticket, woo! Give me a big old double H, W-O-O, double H, okay, woo! Anyways, awakened characters, what are they? How can we obtain them? All right, you guys know the drill. Awakened characters, purple border. They got a huge update recently with the with the newest update where they're they're now transcended characters. There are eleven transcended characters. Medusa is sort of the odd one out because she is the first regular cost transcended character. All of the other transcended characters uh, had their gears or still have their gears for free to twenty five, and they have the transcendence uh, portion of the upgrade for free as well. You still have to awaken the character though. So this is why we're making this video. Now, the problem is, or the, the tricky part about Awakening characters is that they're not all made equally. Uh, awakening or Transcending, actually just call it Awakening. Awakening, unlike Tier 3, requires you to own other characters. You have to have other characters at Tier 2 that are thematically related to the character in question. Now, this is a cool idea, and it's interesting, and it does make you build your roster out more, However, it does increase the cost of these characters because you take a character like Dr. Octopus, for example, his three cost characters, the three characters you need to have at tier two, level 60, before you can awaken Dr. Octopus are Sandman, Vulture, and Mysterio. Those characters are, you know, way cheaper than if you look at Beta Ray Bill, he requires Star-Lord, uh, Thor, and Odin. Star-Lord, Thor, not that expensive, Odin incredibly expensive like <laughs> crazy expensive so yeah that definitely does factor into it so I'm gonna hit you guys up with one list right now here this is my ranking for the top 10 awakened characters I'm gonna keep it very simple and just throw the list up to talk about it quickly here and why I think this is the the way that the characters should be ranked overall um, if you have unlimited resources and you're just going to awaken them all or awaken most of them anyways but as you can see I can put I put a gap between fourth and fifth because of how I feel awakening characters have sort of played out. The top four picks there, Mystique, Beta Ray Bill, Medusa, and Amadeus Cho are head and shoulders on my roster and probably on yours, head and shoulders above the rest. They are just so powerful. They they have plenty of one shot videos that you can look up and they're just incredibly good for all type of like not all not necessarily all types of content but a lot of different types of content so that is why i sort of put them above the rest again if you have unlimited resources then you see dr octopus red skull and then the warriors of the sky and red guardian red guardian is a, is better technically one-on-one -on -one, red guardian is better than sunbird better than shadow shell maybe better than blue dragon but unfortunately he's not very good one-on-one -on -one. like if i was just to compare the two characters in a vacuum red guardian would be much closer to seventh or eighth place but because one-on-one -on -one in something like timeline battle i tried to showcase him he struggles a lot so i had to drop his value and we know the synergistic value of the warriors of the sky i've talked about it before i've made videos about it before that sort of synergistic group uh, strategy and power does move them all up Blue Dragon definitely deserves to be around 6th or 7th, but then Shadow Shell, Sunbird, and War Tiger are only there. Well, I guess War Tiger's at the bottom, it doesn't really matter. But anyways, Shadow Shell and War and Sunbird are there partially because of their synergy. Uh, Red Skull would have more value and would maybe be 5th if PvP mattered more and if he could thrive more in PvP because of rules, changes, and different leagues with different types of characters. 
So he is sort of like, he's a bit of a dark horse in that sense. Uh, and then Dr. Octopus, he's almost good enough to be in that vaulted, you know, top four status, but just not quite, just a little bit too uh, fragile. But I will say this, his performance is very, very good with the CTP of energy. He is one of the few characters that you can play with quite well and quite easily with the CTP of energy. He doesn't take a lot of practice to get used to, and he's very flexible. However, those top four, man, Mystique, Beta Ray Bill, Medusa, Cho, three of which are side by side, they are just bonkers. They can make it work with an obelisk. They one shot stage 50, 60, 70, 80 of world boss. And in Mystique's case, she is an excellent support for PVP. They have it all. And then Medusa, of course, has the added value of having a support, having a leadership for universals and having a support for inhumans. So insane value on these characters. The only reason why I put Mystique over Beta Ray Bill is because of the fact that Mystique has value for PvP and Beta Ray Bill does not. Beta Ray Bill has more one-shot potential than Mystique does. Mystique still has very high raw damage, which is why she can do stage 50 Thanos taking up the entire time. Now, Beta Ray Bill can just one-shot Thanos on stage 50 or 60 or 70 or 80, which is insane. But I do have to acknowledge that if you can't one-shot Thanos with Beta Ray Bill, Beta Ray Bill can't run out the clock and, and finish the job. Mystique can, at least on stage 50. So that is impressive, and that does earn her that top spot there. Uh, but this is only half of the number of lists that I put up. So, that, so this is now what I want to talk about. So now I want to put up another list for you guys where I basically look at the cost of these characters because I think it's important to acknowledge that Awakening is extremely expensive. I don't know what page to go on to show you guys this. So anyways, I'm going to go here and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start with Medusa. So if we throw up this, we're not going to start with Medusa. We're going to throw up all, all 11 characters. If we throw up this list again, right, from Mystique down to War Tiger, now you can see what I'm really trying to talk about here with Awakened characters. The actual total cost to Awaken these characters is only 100% free-to-play accessible in a timely manner anyways for three of these characters. All of the other characters besides Medusa, Dr. Octopus, and Red Skull require a lot of crystals and or real money to be invested, not to mention Mega Tier 2 tickets, Mega Rank Up tickets, etc. So this is where the cost sort of does get involved and does you know necessitate another list it's not really fair to just be like okay yeah, mystique's the best but uh you need over 9,000 crystals up front in order to get mystique you're gonna need 2500 to buy mystique from the shop then you're gonna need 6600 to buy magneto sure you get 1500 back but you have to put that cost up front then you have to get magneto tier 2 sure just the grinding it takes of playing his mission then you also have to use a mega tier 2 ticket on mystique ouch that's a lot of cost for one character in a game with what are we at 227 characters 10,000 crystals is kind of a steep price to pay for one character yeah pretty bonkers beta ray bill well it's not it's not 10,000 9,000 crystals but you have to pay what is it 1500 or 1750 crystals to buy odin at one star because they don't give him for free anymore then you have to finish the entire epic quest, which costs like 10,000 energy, you know, uh, 640 CCF, tier three materials, black antimatter, right? All that stuff. You got to get Phylavel, all that stuff. And then you still have to take Odin up to six stars. That's another, you know, 10,000 or 11,000 black antimatter. That's another 6,000 biometrics. Another, you know, 50, 60 million gold. Awesome right? That's, that's so cheap. All that for Beta Ray Bill for just one character. So obviously transcendent characters are very, very expensive for new players to obtain. Even if you're spending, it's very expensive. And they're also very expensive to obtain. Basically, some of them are almost impossible to obtain for free to play players. So I wanted to put together another list here that takes into consideration the, the total cost, the total cost of these characters. Now again, this doesn't mean that the that the power level of these characters changes, but it's just it'll take months, if not a year or more, for a free-to-play character, for a free-to-play player, free-to-play character, for a free-to-play player to obtain some of these characters the hard way, right? If they don't have any of the necessary materials. So, looking at this, looking at this new list, let's take a look at how it shakes out. 
So we've got Medusa number one as the new number one here for free to play players. Then Dr. Octopus. So he takes a huge jump forward. Then we finally get to Beta Ray Bill, Mystique, and Amadeus Cho. And then I did put again a gap, not as big of a gap, but then there's a gap for Red Skull. The, the funny thing is for the Warriors of the Sky, their value is pretty much the same. They're not that expensive. It's 2,500 crystals for Blue Dragon, and then it's a paywall bio subscription for Sunbird. But that's it, right? Shadow Shell is free. War Tiger is free. So they're 50% free to play, 25% crystal wall, 25% paywall. Their value is not that much better compared to their cost to actually move them up on the list. So them and, and Red Guardian actually stay the same. You could flip flop Red Guardian and War Tiger, to be honest, you really could. But uh, it's that top five that's quite interesting. So, you know, Amadeus Cho is actually not that expensive. You could even move Amadeus Cho up one or two spots. You need Luna, but Luna is basically the most highly recommended uh, paywall character to get first. So pretty much every player has Luna, um, even free to play players have, and you can get her bios rarely, but you can get them from dimension missions. And then you need wave wave just costs two months and 1500 crystals. That is cheap. Okay. To get wave for 1500 crystals and two months worth of, of doing the heroic quest is extremely cheap compared to where the heck is wave compared to some of these other characters like, uh, Odin, like Magneto right it's gonna take months like think about it saving up 6600 crystals for a free-to-play player it takes three months anyways or two months for your first two months anyways so if you're gonna blow that right away on magneto you're still down another 2500 crystals to get mystique right so you're looking at four or five months minimum to get mystique if you start from day one and that's your goal whereas in in half the time you could get medusa transcended right Plus, you need to factor in the amount of time it takes to get all the Mandalays and stuff like that. So, Medusa's amazing, amazing character. One shot stage 50, 60, 70 of Proxima, Call Obsidian. She can almost one shot Corvus. Excellent character. She has some PvP value as well. She's just an amazing all around character. She's got, you know, a uh, leadership, like we said, for all universal types. She buffs in humans, which means she buffs herself. All defense down, healing, you know immunity iframes she's got it all and she's 100 percent free to play so she goes immediately to the top i wish beta ray bill was cheaper because i would honestly put him first but no so then we have dr octopus why does dr octopus jump up so much because he's he's sort of like medusa light he's he's got most of what medusa has uh except for the survivability he doesn't have a heal he doesn't have as many um iframe and immunity slash invincibility skills he's basically just a lower end version of medusa and his all defense down is not as high instead of being whatever 50 percent, it's 30 percent. he does have a damage proc to sort of make up for that um and he can do very high stages of proxima and he can one shot and stuff like that he can't do call obsidian he can do corvus so a little bit less utility which means he's a little bit worse but again a hundred percent free to play which does put him at or near the top now again if you're a free to play player you can decide I want to get Medusa, but then I'm going to skip Dr. Octopus and Beta Ray Bill and go right for Mystique. You're going to need to save up crystals regardless once you once you pass the second character. All of those other characters require crystals, so you're going to need to save up crystals anyways. Um, and you're going to need to save up Mandalay Gem Fragments and Awakening Stones by playing Squad Battle. So it's all going to take time. And so I think the, the point of the list and the point of the ranking to put Dr. Octopus second is so that you have time not only to consider your options from two to three, but also to see who the next awakening character is. My advice is always when there's an update around the corner and people ask me, should I awaken and transcend Medusa? Should I awaken and transcend Mystique? Oh, but they're number one on your list. Yeah, but there's an update a week away. We don't know who's coming out. They might be coming out with the next Beta Ray Bill, but this time he's free to play friendly. You're gonna want that character ASAP if if you need him to, to you know be one-shotting bosses left and right. So that's always my advice. But hopefully this has helped you guys evaluate these characters and rank them amongst each other for both PvE and PvP and also considering their cost. Because unlike Tier 3s where you just need to collect the materials, there's a lot more involved and there's a lot more re it's a lot more resource intensive because when you say Tier 2, you still have to do all their gears. You know, that's a lot of Dimension debris and um, gear up kits, gold, Norn stones. There's a lot going into all of these rank ups, lots of bios, tons of bios. Uh, and so I wanted to try to encapsulate that, you know, accurately and reflect their value based 
solely on their output and based on a combination of their output and their cost so yeah hit me up in the comments down below let me know what you think of the list thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one take care